any questions, remarks? Thank you um, for the stimulating um, presentation. You alluded us to the fact that forced migration and refugee, refugee and forced migration has increased by uh, yeah. scale and complexity. I wanted to share news with you that uh, uh, late Graham Hugo and I started to look at uh, preparing a textbook on demography of forced migration and refugees. Uh, unfortunately, uh, with passing away of Graham uh, Hugo, uh, Ellen Crayley and I, who was the editor of the International Migration Review, uh, we are uh, finalizing the manuscript uh, and the aim of the book is to uh, basically is a textbook. Uh, we invited around 15 scholars who know uh, in the field of forced migration there are not many people who are working on that area. Uh, the book uh, is finishing uh, I mean, this year or early next year, and we are hoping to launch the book at the ISSB conference in South Africa. So, okay, excellent. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, Franz. This is a wonderful survey of the complexities of this field. Could you go to the slide where you show uh, Guy Abel's projection of the long term future of? I'm not sure exactly what the vertical axis was. Yeah. That, no, you just passed it right there. Number, number of migrants, migrants in, in the world in millions. millions. Okay, good. So I would like to review. Migrants that. defined as people uh, of, who, may, who change residence over five, within a five year period. Yes, within a five year period, and a migrant is a person who stays for a year. I think. There's some definition. So if you look at the United Nations Population Division projection of number of migrants from what they call the less developed regions to the more developed regions, their projection is it will start from where it is and decrease to zero yeah. and be zero from 2050 on. Yeah. This projection is that it is steady. Yeah. And I have done projections of the same quantity, which based on a gravity model, yeah, I know. Yeah. go from the present level upward to several times the present level and then gradually level off to an asymptote at a much higher level. Yeah. Based on your intuitive and historical survey, uh, of those three scenarios, which do you think is the most plausible? The most plausible is that, uh, okay, first I should say that the three papers use a different concept of migration. Yes. I think the UN used place of birth by place of residence, correct? Lifetime migration. Uh, 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 Guy estimated from lifetime migration uh, recent migration data. And I think you tried to use, or you used flows, wasn't it? In your, uh, uh, exactly. So therefore, the concept is different. However, uh, I think my mobility will increase. So uh, I think the UN will not uh, materialize. So, and otherwise, okay, I don't know, I think this is, yeah. So, since both of you are in the room, I think <laughs> your <laughs> forecast and the uh, guy's forecast are more realistic than the UN forecast. <laughs> so, average New York projection and guy projection are consistent with each other. Uh, thank you. Further questions? Uh, 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 oh, there. Yeah. Francesco. Thank you, Franz. Uh, Maybe this question would have been, is to you, but it could have been also to Nico, or maybe to Anne yesterday. I think we are still struggling with causality in, a, in kind of multi-state and even multi-regional forecasting. You alluded to that, and yeah. Nico basically tackled the issue. And I think this is the big uh, challenge for demographers if we have to sell these models to the rest of the world who doesn't believe in exogeneity, association, or whatever. So what is the potential solution, if I may ask? The potential solution is micro-macro. <laughs> it uh, is a common uh, model and uh, so your very nice paper in population studies uh, is for the special issue. Uh, uh, so and, uh, people who did not read that paper should read it. but. Um, I think 
<laughs> no, 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 I can say that, you can say that. And uh, so, but because we are interested in population change. But as Wolfgang says also in demographic metabolism, cohorts differ and cohorts have, are heterogeneous. So there's inter-cohort differences and there's intra-cohort differences. So that means, I mean, the ultimate difference is look at the individual. But individuals also change depending on conditions, depending on events and circumstances and, uh, and partners or whatever uh, they meet. So um, therefore, uh, you have to focus on the mechanism, the processes. And that's why I was very much interested in what is analytical uh, sociology or uh, uh, related fields who do the same but call, make, call it differently. But uh, the mechanism-based approach. And the mechanism-based approach is that you try to find a cause and an effect. And a cause must be linked to an effect. But a, a, a causal link is probabilistic. So if you have a cause, you have more likely to have this, or less likely. So the probabilistic causality, that is the key concept. And uh, this is, yeah, that should be introduced in models, that's correct. And since then you need to, uh, effect and cause have to be linked. The model has to be a life course model, no other way. Because as much research has shown, early life experience may affect later life conditions, situations and, 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 and outcomes. So that, that has to be, uh, so we will, in the study of causality, face the problem that Barker faced when he wanted to study the impact of early life conditions on uh, cardiovascular disease at, later life, at, at, later, at, at higher ages. This is, this is the chapter, that's it. One last question, please. Thank you, Franz. Uh, you mentioned that uh, usual place of residence and migration are an outdated concept. But the basic uh, demographic measurement are based on usual residence, yes. the number of population, yes. age, and structure. That means all what I learned about demography is out of date. You see, the thing is that, okay, the way you can, may look at measurement as something static. This is what uh, uh, statistical officers uh, do, and that we have to take as given. Don't do that. Because the world is changing, and statistical officers are also changing and should change. So the question is whether we are measuring what we want to know. And very often we are not measuring, not only in statistics, but elsewhere too, we are not measuring what we want to know. We are not even seeing what we need to know. So therefore we have to have different perspectives. <coughs> Okay, before the break I have one okay. short provocative question myself. <laughs> you described how complex migration is. So, uh, how deep into economics and refugee matters and other non-demographic areas should we demographers go ourselves with describing and modeling and projecting migration? Thank you. Okay, I think the only way is to go very far. And then the question is how should we do it? No, as a market we don't do it because we have a comparative advantage, so we should uh, uh, link with uh, economists and that's, it, that's the basic concept of interdisciplinary research. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you everybody. Now we have a coffee break. Thanks.